Hi, this is your, your instructor Rich Sardinov. Today I'm going to demonstrate how you can start a new activity from an existing activity. Let's remember what an activity is. It's essentially the, uh, a, a Java class in Android and it supports a basic function. Um, you can actually make it to support more than one function but the primary use is that you support a basic function. For instance, in this example, this panel corresponds to an activity and what it support is what what it supports is to allow the user a user to log in to type in the login information and the password information and click the login button or cancel out button and if the user decides to log in a, a new activity will start to verify the login information so i'm going to show you how uh, when a button is clicked you can start a new define create uh, and start a new activity where we do something else and that something else is verification of the login information. And as a result of the verification, we'll print out some message. If the login information is correct, we'll say login was successful. If the login information was incorrect, we'll say login failed. So that's the goal today. Um, I want to show you first the design of the application. Let me enlarge this view. It's always a good practice to draw your UI panels. When you design your UI panel, to, uh, to draw it and uh, decide what kind of UI elements you want to add and what kind of layout you want to have. If you remember from last time, a layout is essentially the, the, uh, a class which instructs Android operating system on how the UI elements should be placed on the screen. And in this example, we'll have a vertical linear layout. I forgot to add linear here, but this is going to be a linear layout on the outside, so each element, login, the login field, password label, password field, and those two buttons together will be stacked vertically uh, in the order that I add them to UI screen. But the login and cancel buttons, if you, if you look at this closely, are placed horizontally. So the two are uh, encapsulated in a horizontal linear layout, in, in the horizontal linear layout, the UI elements are placed next to one another. That's the simplest layout. There are more complicated layouts. We'll cover them later in the class. Uh, but let's start with the basic, which is the linear layout. Now, when that uh, when that button login button is clicked, uh, and I haven't uh, I haven't sketched a specific design for it because it's a very simple uh, UI panel, which is this one. Okay. So the new one will come and uh, there will be a text field. But again, I'm not sketching that specifically because it's pretty straightforward. Now let's see how we can do this. And I have actually uh, designed, designed this program ahead of time. This is how it looks beforehand. I've, I've developed it for the class. But let's, let's do it again, starting from scratch. Let's call, uh, let's start with new project wizard. Let's call this demo login application. Let's call it demo login application. Let's choose the defaults, phone and tablet. Let's not worry about where, TV, Android, Glass, etc. And let's start with the empty activity. You know, we can also choose blank activity. Let's just start with the blank, uh, empty activity, sorry. And I have to point out here, here that although I'm building this UI panel, a UI login panel from scratch, Android does have template support for logins, this one. If you choose this, and if you decide to play with this, if you choose this, you'll see that the screen that I manually, that I'm going to manually draw, is actually available as a template. But still, uh, not everything you want to do has a template, so it's a good practice to actually start with the empty activity and add UI elements to it. So let's go. Let's choose the hard way. Okay. Main login demo activity. Let's call this main activity main login demo activity. Let's click finish. It's going to take a while to build the project, as you might remember from the last time. So Android build us the project um, by default. Let's move the old one out of the way. And let's see, let's wait for the uh, for Android Studio to build the project. As you see, there are some red marks here. 
it's because the project is still being built. It takes a while. Okay. So the project is, has been built. And let me just remind you what you get. <clears throat> There's the application level information, demo login application, so some properties of the application. There's the Java class, which we will uh, modify. Let me put a comment here. Now I want to talk about this to do. If you use this comment backslash twice and then write to do, uh, Android Studio, just like Eclipse, will keep track of the um, blank functionality. Blank meaning um, the places where you plan to add code in the future. This is a good practice because when you're developing code, uh, you may you may leave some part of the functionality to be for implementation at a later time so that you keep your train of thought. In such cases, just add a to-do, and it will show it as to-do in this list. See, and we'll have more examples of that. Now, let me close this. And we'll have, and as you see, uh, Android Studio creates a bunch of packages, uh, directories, and files, and then for instance, strings will have string de uh, definitions. And you'll see how we can, we can change this and make application look differently. And this is the main design panel. Okay. This is the main design panel. It's it's very simple. It says demo login application. Hello world. Uh, let's just delete this uh, string. Let's go to the, the text view. And this is how the uh, XML file looks. I gave a brief, brief introduction to XML last time. It's essentially a way to sandwich a particular value between two uh, tags, start tag and end tag. For instance, the information here, relative layout. So this is the definition, and there is there are some properties of it, and then the whole thing has been closed with this closing tag. Now, what I'll do, I'll change this to linear layout, just like the last time, because that's how I am designing this. Uh, save it. Let's click on the design and see what it looks like. Now, double click on it. So orientation is not defined. Remember, linear layout can have a, ver a, a vertical or a horizontal definition uh, layout orientation. So we'll choose vertical. When we choose vertical elements, we add will be uh, stacked on top of one another in a linear fashion, but vertically. If we choose horizontal, they will be put next to each other horizontally. Now. Demo login application. Let's remind what let's remember what we're trying to build. We're trying to build this this view. Or if you if you like the sketch, we're trying to build this view. So we'll add two labels, login and password, but we'll also add a login uh, text field and a password text field, and then we'll add two buttons in a horizontal layout. Now horizontal linear layout. Right. Let's do that. Let me enlarge this view as as in the last time, we're using the palette and dra drag and drop. Uh, as you can see, uh, the palette gives us um, UI elements like layouts, widgets like plain text view, large text, medium text, small text, buttons, checkboxes, and we'll do we'll do most of these later in the class. Um, then text fields, then containers. These are all the UI elements you should be familiar with, and date and time. And there is some uh, more sophisticated UI elements. Uh, we can we cannot cover every every one of them, but we'll cover the most uh, common ones. Now, let's for the uh, login label use large text. Let's just you see I'm just dragging and dropping here, large text. Okay, let me make this really large, be long, and let me change the text to login, and let me change the ID to login text view. Let me just remind you what this ID is for. Now, we add these elements, and the, the elements are defined in an XML file. The question is, in Java, in Java programs, how do you, how do you get a reference to these elements? It's through this ID uh, uh, that you, def you assign to the UI element. I gave examples last time. I'll give more examples today. So let's click on this area. So we have the login. Now let's add uh, a text field. So there are multiple text fields, as you see. We'll have uh, plain text, 
numeric password, password, email, postal address, they are all different. We'll play with, with, with those, some of those. Uh, you can also play with those in your own time. But for login, we'll use plain text. Okay. So we have the plain text. Let's double click on it. Edit text. It says edit text. It will say login text. Login plain text or lo just login text, let's say. See, it shows up just next to login. Now let's add another large text and we'll call it password. See how they are stacked um, linearly and vertically, linear vertically. Or, um, let's call this password label view. I should really call this label. In Java, the uh, UI element, those such UI elements are called labels. But let's make it large. It doesn't really matter because they are not going to be visible. Now, for password, we'll have a password field, text field. Text fields are fields that you can uh, interact with. The other ones, the, these widgets, plain text view, these are uh, the widgets that you cannot interact with. It's just for display. But text fields are UI elements into which you can type uh, letters or numbers. Okay, now we have the password field. Now let's move on. Uh, remember the design. Design says we got this part of the design. Now login and cancel buttons. Now I don't want to add uh, login and cancel buttons right away because I want to put them next to one another in a horizontal view. So I need to first add a horizontal layout. I go to the linear layout horizontal. I take care. Let's just enlarge this. Okay. Okay. Now, now here I add the buttons. Let's find the buttons. Just let's just use regular button. It could be a big button or a small button. Uh, a regular button and a small button. Double click on it. We'll call this login. Let's call the ID login button so that we know what we're talking about in Java when we're implementing support for things like clicking a button. Now add another button. Okay, let's call this cancel. And I'm going not going to implement anything on this. It's, it's really um, trivial. I was thinking maybe you can play with this. You can just add functionality like closing the application. So we have login password and login login label, login field, password label, password field, login button, cancel button. Let's let's run this and see how it shows up in our virtual device. Let's just run it. I'm gonna run it in emulator. This was the previous application by the way. This, this is when I was originally building it for the class. Now let's wait and see. While you're waiting what we can do, we can actually uh, monitor, we can go to monitor. Uh, you can see what's happening in the load. So Android Studio is trying to deploy the application to the virtual device. And this is and we'll wait and see when it's ready. And then it came up. See? Um, so this is our design right here. And that's how show that's how the application shows up in the virtual device. I also ran this in a uh, physical device and it essentially looks the same. Maybe we wanna change this uh, change this title. Let me show you how we can do that. Um, okay. Let's go and do this. Go to Android Manifest. You see the label demo login application? It's actually defined in this strings.xml. See where the strings are, the values. Demo login. It just as let's just say for visits. 484. Demo for physics 484. Now we need to reboot the application for it to take effect. When we click play, it actually uh, Android Studio will reboot because something has changed, and it's again going to take some time. Let's just wait. 
Okay, see how the uh, the title for the application changed. All I did was go and change the app name to demo for Phys physics 484 in this strings that XML. How do I know what I need to change? Well, if you look at this Android manifest XML, right? Uh, that's 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 the label. Okay, that's the application label. Now, uh, let's let's do the following next. Um, what do we need to do here? Well, we decided that we would um, add interaction to the login login button, so we're going to define a login button. A Java login button, a private button, and you might remember that Android helps you with the class. You see, but button right here says button Android that widget. So that I take it, I just press enter. So when I do that, it imports the widget button. Okay, that's what happened. Um, so login button. I can also add the cancel button. I'm not going to do anything with it, but just for completeness, I'll add add it. Now let's go to create. Remember that on create is what gets uh, to run as soon as you start your Android application. On create, when the application is coming up, uh, whatever you put here will be executed. And by default, Android Studio adds a few things for you. It calls this the, the super classes on create and then it sets the con content view and you see that the content view layout activity main login demo which is what we just edited it's this xml file see this is the xml file and that's what we designed um, that gets loaded okay now we can so those are those happen by default and those are generated by uh, android studio now let's let's first get a uh, reference to the login button. Remember how we do that. First of all, we have to cast it to the button class, find view by ID, and it's r dot id dot. See, Android Studio helps you. It's asking you what you're looking for. Cancel button, edit text, login button. We're looking for the edit login button. Okay. Now let's look at the cancel button. I like this. Um, Code complete feature. See, before I write everything, it tells me what it's likely going to be. Okay. Fine. Again, I just type fine. It tells me fine uh, view by ID. That's the only method that starts with fine. I just click enter and then I add r.id. That's well, cancel button. So this co code complete makes a lot of things easier. Now, next thing is we're going to add. A listener as we've done before login button set and you see it's, it's helping me with the methods see all these methods you don't need to memorize all of them uh, nobody remembers all of them um, unless you like write 100 uh, 100 different UI uh, programs there's always the documentation API documentation everyone relies on the API documentation to remember the details so I don't expect you to remember those set on click listener I'll actually just uh, do this. Now it's going to be new. The view on click listener. And I just selected it and it actually filled in the rest. In principle, when we look for a listener, uh, we will be implementing the on click method. What the on click method? Uh, There's one compilation error that I'm trying to figure out. I guess I think it didn't do this completely. It's okay, now it's working. Now I'm going to add some to do's here. Now let's remember how we need to write this program. On click will be invoked when a user clicks the uh, login button. So when a user clicks uh, the login button, let me add a comment here. When a user click on the login button, what is supposed to happen? 
Well, first of all, you need to read off what login and password the user entered. Entered, right? You need to first know, know that. Then, once you have these, next thing, start the login verification activity. Okay, how do you do that? We'll come to that. Let's first do, let's, uh, again, let me show you the power of or usefulness of to do. If you click on this, see there are three things you need to fill, it says. Of course, for a small project, maybe that's not a big issue, but if you have an application with thousands of lines of code and you put these to do's, it's very convenient to see what you have forgotten to implement. Uh, you can always come come to these uh, to do areas and then you can implement it. You just double click on them, it will take you to the location where you left some piece of code unimplemented. Well, remember, uh, remember the design. What we had, we have a login and a password text view, right? Text view. So you need to find the text view elements. What are the text view elements? Let's look at the uh, application text. Well, the login uh, login text is is the uh, is where we're going to read the login information, and this is unfortunately called edit text. It should have been password text. I should say password text. That's actually a better uh, better name. Login button, cancel button. So we're going to read. Uh, let's let's go to the program. We're first going to get the login view, and to do that again, we're going to use find by view ID r dot id dot uh, password text. Oh, sorry, it's going to be login text, right? Login. Which one? I actually forgot. Let's double check. Uh, we have text view, login text view, and login text. Remember, this is the label. This just has the text login. But this is what the user will uh, type into. So it's login, login text. Login text. That's the correct one. And you see there's a compilation error, error here because find view is used, returns a base class, view, view class. The question is, um, Unless, unless Android or Java, I should say, knows what the class type is, it's not going to be able to uh, set it to the variable. I should say text view. This is actually a large text view, but doesn't matter. Text view. Now let's also get the um, password view. Again, we're going to. We're going to cast it find view by ID r dot id dot password text. Say there were two things password uh, label view and then password text. Label is, is what just says uh, password. Now we got the, uh, the text views, but how do we read off what the user typed into them? Again, this is the UI element. This is not what the user typed into them. The user typed into them a, a string. How do we read that string? And it could change. Well, let's start with login. What you do is login dot get text. Okay, that's what returns the text written into it. And look at the type. If you just hover over it, hover, hover over into it, it's returning a character se sequence. See, it says char sequence. So it's going to be a char sequence. Login, let's call it this login char sequence. Now let's do the same thing for password. So password get text. So we get the text. In fact, uh, now we have made we have uh, made some improvements in our code. We can just remove this now because we already done that. Now, next, 
how do you start a, a login verification activity? Well, here I need to introduce you to the class called Intents. If you look at your lecture notes, and I'll explain what it is. Um, question mark. Let me put a question mark. Actually, I should comment this out. Now, before I actually uh, start a new activity, I should ask the question what, what the new activity should will be. Well, it's going to be the login verification activity, but I have not yet defined this. So let me go to app and define the second activity. Now, to define a second activity or any activity, you choose the app, go to file, choose new, and then go to activity and then see there's a gallery, there are a bunch of activities. Now that's one way. Or you can just choose the app, right right click on it, new. So you can create a bunch of stuff. Just create activity. There's a rich set of support for what you can create here, as you can see. Uh, let's create another uh, empty activity. Okay. Let's just click empty activity. Now this is uh, this by default says main activity, but what we're going to say login verification demo activity. Okay. Now that's that's what we uh, decided to create. Now. We created the new activity. Let's go back to the original program. Now let me comment this out. Uh, intent. Oh, by the way, you see the red because I have not, I have not imported the intent. So I'm doing control uh, space then choosing intent. When I do that, see what uh, Android Studio does. It imports the Android.content.intent uh, class. It needs to do that so that it knows what to create. Now this one is going to be login verification demo activity, but the correct syntax is that you call the class. That's the constructor. What this intent is doing is that, and let me go to this view. How creating a new uh, um, activity works. That's that's our topic here. Now what happens is that. Under the cover, Android, uh, Android operating system runs something called Activity Manager. This is not something you have direct control over. You can just interact with it indirectly. And to interact with it, you need to use a, a, an intent class. So this is your activity. And at some point, you decide to create a new activity. In order to do that, you have to interact with the Activity Manager. That's the procedure in Android. And tell Activity Manager exactly what you want to do. And to, to accomplish that, to tell what you want to do, you put that information in what's called an intent object. Again, uh, intent object is the means for your activity to communicate with the activity manager for it to create a new activity. So a new activity is created here. Now, how will the activity manager know what to create and what kind of information to pass to it? Well, you put that information in intent. And to do that, you first define what the content context is, and context is your current activity, and then what the new activity to be started is. It's the login verification demo activity. Now, let's just um, do the following. So, how do we pass login and password to? Um, to the new activity. Well, the main of to doing that is to use the put extra method of intent. So our intent is I. There's a method called put extra. It takes in uh, a key and a value. Okay, let me just put a key and a value. What key and a value? String key. Let me just for now add some uh, default values. So what I'm saying is that um, the way to communicate with the, uh, with the new activity from this activity in order to pass information, and what I want to pass here is login and password, is to tell, uh, the, to tell Activity Manager uh, what you're trying to provide. 
Now, what I'm trying to provide here is, of course, key is login, or I should, I should just say login user typed. Okay, the value. What the value? It's well, it's the login var sequence. Actually, the value I'm trying to put, put in is is not a, a string, but a char sequence. So I should say char sequence. And then I do a key value. I have a, I have done a really a lousy programming. I follow the lousy programming practice here. I define the key here in the text. Um, this is lousy because the uh, receiving end also needs to know uh, what the name of the key is so that it can grab the value. So since it's buried here, it's not easy for somebody else to read it. So rather than do that, let's define a key here as a public object and public function. And I'll I'll actually copy over from the initial uh, implementation I had. Okay. So I'll I'll define a login string key and see what I'm doing here. I'm giving it a really long name. This part is is the package name as you can see. Oh actually of course, this is from the other application. Let me just change this to copy. Okay. And then I give a, a key name, login. Now, the reason I'm adding this is such that um, is because uh, it, it will be a unique unique uh, string key because uh, because this is uh, this is defined in this package. This will be a unique unique key. It's always a good practice. To define such uh, unique uh, IDs keys. Now, so what I can do now is I can just say this is login string key. In fact, now that I put this, I don't even have to define this key variable. I can just do okay, just do, and then remove this. I don't need this anymore. Okay. Now this is how I pass, and and then I actually don't even. I need to define this variable. I can just take this value, login, and I remove that. The only reason I've done, I've defined those earlier is so that you have an idea about the context. Uh, that is, when you call, make this call, put, put extra, you take uh, a key and a value. Now let's do the same thing for a uh, password, for the password. Again, I need to define a password uh, uh, key value, but I ha already have my password character sequence. Now, similar to login string key, let's define a login password key. I'll just uh, use what I had earlier when I was first developing this for the lecture. So I'll I'll define a unique string string. Okay. So I have those two, and let me make this password string. So let's see what we have done again. Uh, let me change this. Instantiate an intent to start a new activity, which will be login verification and pass login and password to the new activity okay so that's what i'm doing now we have defined so we have read off here we're reading off uh, what user types now we're creating an intent object so that we can interact with the activity manager to create a new activity the second panel now we want to pass information to the new activity the information is login and password so we're putting them into the intent object for it to be carried over. Now finally what we do is we start the activity. All we have to do is call start activity. And then pass in the intent object. That's all. So we're done here. Now what's going to happen is that when we uh, when we when a user clicks on the uh, on click button uh, and uh, then we'll get to start activity. Now let's uh, move on to 
to the uh, login verification demo activity. Now, when start activity is run by the activity manager, on create method will get hit. So you, this method will be executed. Now, what should be done on login um, login verification? Let's just put some to dos. For read off login and password from intent object. Next, um, verify that login is, and I'm doing a don't dummy login here. Really, it's not. I'm not checking against the database or anything. This is just for a demonstration pur purpose. And password is password. So that's that's the only time uh, I'm gonna accept the login as correct. Now, so let let and then. And then finally, put the message into the text text view in the new activity. So let's first read off the login and password. Um, the way to do that is we first get the intent, intent that we pass to the, um, can be anything, and the, any other name, get intent. So every activity will have a associated intent. Remember, activity manager, when it's creating the new activity, it takes the intent object from the activity that's asking the activity manager to start a new activity. So intent ab uh, object comes to the activity manager, activity manager passes it to the new activity. So Get intent is the call to get this new activity. Now, once we have the activity, what we can say is get character sequence extra. And what are we trying to get? Well, what did we put there? We put in um, the other one, name, login demo activity, login string key. That's what we put in there. But this is a character sequence, so let's Set it to login string, let's say, or to be more specific, let's call it login character sequence. Now, next, how about the password? Password character sequence intent get and then password string key. So now what I've done is I read off um, the login and the password information. Now verify that login is uh, my email address and password is password. Well, if login character set and character sequence is not string, we have to convert it to string equals, and let me say. Uh, not the email at gmail.com and password character set to string equals password. Then, what are we going to do? Then we're going to print out uh, success, but let's define the string. string outcome. Let's call it outcome. Make sure it's blank. Or we can just say null, it's undefined. So here we'll say outcome equals login successfully. Okay. Else outcome is login failed. Okay. Okay. So we have completed this task. Let's just remove to do. We have completed this task. And finally, let's put the message to the activity. Well, how do we do that? Uh, let's remember what we had there as the text element. Um, oh, we actually haven't uh, defined, sorry. We actually haven't uh, added a text view. Let's 
just add plain text view or let, let's make it small text oh by the way um, let me let me make this linear layout first linear layout okay let's look at the design it allows the design let's just delete this let's go back let's just delete this it's easier to delete here let's go back let's double click on it linear layout orientation will be vertical okay let's make this a bit bigger Okay, I'm having some difficulty with this one. Oops, let me let me manually. I'll just do that manually. I'll change it manually. Changes to wrap content. Okay. Let's just leave this blank. Let's just see now how it works. Hmm. That's a bit awkward, but let's not worry about it. Uh, we'll run it. Uh, Where's the Java class? Okay, here it is. Now I need one one last thing. I need the element. Let's call this login verification view. Okay. Um, let's go here. Now let's first get the text view. Login verification text. Again, we'll use the find by view. R dot ID. By now, you should be able to you should be able uh, to feel comfortable comfortable about this. Okay. Now we got the login verification view, and now we'll set it. Set. Text and outcome. So let's see what we have done here. This is a new activity we created, login verification activity. All we have to do is to create the onCreate method. I uh, to to add to onCreate method. Sorry, uh, the first two lines were added by Android Android Studio directly. Now, first we read off the login and password from the intent object that the activity manager of our Android operating system gives us. So we, we read them off. Now, we compare the login to, uh, to my email address and the password to the specific password. If they are equal, then we say outcome login successful. If not, then login failed. Now, now, we decided what to print out, but how do we print out onto the screen? Well, we first need to get the the text into which we are going to write this outcome. Okay, that's how we do it using find by view again. And then what we do login verification that text set text. That's all. So our program is complete. 